Hi there and welcome to another video in the Python Snippets tutorial series. In this video we're going to take a look at how to count the number of occurrences in a data structure in Python and particularly we're going to take a look at two, uh, two things in the collections module in Python and that's the default dict and the counter. So we'll come to them a bit later but first of all let's try counting this list of people let's try counting the number of occurrences of each person um, in that list and we're going to start by doing this manually so I'll set um, an empty dictionary and this dictionary is going to store as a key the name let's say John and the value is the number of times that that key occurs in the list so in this case John occurs three times so it would be the key John would, would return the value 3. Dave returns uh, 2 because there's two occurrences of Dave in the list. So we want to build up that dictionary to store the counts of the number of items, uh, the number of occurrences of each name. So we're going to iterate over the lists. For person and people, we're going to say, now first of all we want to add the person to the counts array if they don't already exist. So I can say if person is not in counts, that means if there is no key with that person's name in the counts dictionary, then we're going to add it and we're going to say counts person equals one. Now, the reason it's set to one is because if it doesn't exist in the dictionary, let's say we, we come to John at the beginning, John will not exist at the beginning and we then create a key called John and set the number equal to one and then the next time it occurs, it, it, it sees John in the dictionary and in the list, we want to increment the value. So that's what we're going to do in the else block. If the person is already in the counts, we can get the key and oops, we can increment the value by one. Okay. Now that's the for loop that will calculate the count of each name in that list. So if we look at the end result of that, we can see that John is there three times, Martin's there once, Dave is there twice, and Brad is there once. So what I want to do is show you how you can use a default dict to make uh, this particular code here redundant. Um, we, we don't want to have to write these if statements and check whether things exist already in the dictionary. We want to use default dict to speed up that process. Now default dict is defined in the collections module in Python. So I'll import it here. And then I'll create another variable called counts and we'll set that to default dict. And we'll pass in a factory function that's used to initialize a key that doesn't already exist in the dictionary. Let me explain what this means. We're using the int factory function, which if you don't call it with any arguments, returns the default value of an integer, which is zero. So what happens is when we look to set an, a new key in this dictionary, if it doesn't already exist, it's created with the value zero, okay? And that, that reduces the, the code that was in the for loop to a single line. So I can say for person and people, counts person and I'll say plus equals one so we're, we're just increment okay and then at the end I'll return counts and we see we get the same result in here it's a default dict instead of a dictionary but it's the same result we can still index into it we can say brad we get the count for brad which is one and yeah so we don't need to check whether person already exists in counts the way we did up here. We can simply increment the value um, and if it doesn't exist, it will have created it with the integer constructor, which returns zero. And then we, we, when we plus equal one, it will set the initial value to one. And just to demonstrate what default dict is, Python has a top level is subclass function, which I can then, I can use here to verify that the, the default dict that we've got counts as a subclass of dict. Um, sorry, my mistake there. I'll use the default dict parameter and that returns true. So what that is saying is that default dict is a subclass of the dictionary class that you normally use in Python. So that's slightly better. We have reduced that to three lines of code 
But now I want to show you something very handy in Python to know about, and that's the counter class. And I'll say from collections import counter. And it becomes a simple one liner. The counts, we create, a, we instantiate a counter instance and we pass in the people list. And we can then look at that. And it's already done the counts for us. So the counter just takes in a sequence and it will uh, count up the occurrences of each item in that sequence. John again has three and same for the rest of these values. Now what I want to show you that the again counter is a subclass of dictionary. Okay that will return true as before. So handy to know that counter and default dict everything you can do on a dictionary in Python you can also do on these subclasses um, and the counter in particular adds a couple of very useful operations like the most common function. So on the counter we can call most common and, and then I can get the one most common item which is John. It gives you a tuple with the, the name and the value. I could get the two most common items which will give you John and Dave. And actually you know if you have a big list you could say you know give me the 50 most common items and that will do that for you. Okay so um, that's quite useful to know. Um, and finally there is another function that the counter class adds to the normal dictionary uh, API and that's the subtract function. So what I can actually do is subtract off a second iterable. Uh, let's say I subtract John and then I look at counts. What that actually does is, is subtract away one. Remember that John had three values. When you call subtract and you pass another iterable, uh, John has two. And to demonstrate what this does, if I passed in Dave to this, we can see that Dave has two, um, two in the current list, but becomes one. So, and if I passed in John twice, John would have one. And actually these numbers can go negative. So if John was in this list another two times, it would uh, subtract two, another two from John and then you'll end up with negative one in that scenario. So that's useful to know about as well. It's essentially when you subtract uh, another iterable, you can kind of get the difference between two, the, the numbers of occurrences in two, uh, two lists. So that's all for this video. I think um, you'll much more commonly use the counter.mostcommon function in Python. Counter.subtract is maybe useful for particular scenarios. Uh, I can't say I've ever used it in production code, but it's there if you need it. So using this strategy, we've re we have reduced um, these lines of code down to a single line using the counter. And also very handy to know about, the default dict can eliminate that sort of burdensome code that you need to uh, to write in order to check whether a key exists in a dictionary before you instantiate it. You simply provide the default dict with a constructor, in this case the int function, and it will create that default by, um, it will create that default on its own um, if it doesn't already exist in the dictionary, the item that you're trying to put in. So that's all for this video. Thank you for watching and please subscribe and any requests, give me a shout. Thank you.